sorry. Ah. Welcome to Flask and Purpose, the show where Chris and I sleuth the internet to find the darkest stories and share them with you and each other. Chris, how you doing? Good. All right, Chris, what questions do you have for me today? Does the Long Island monster lift? Bro, I'm not even going near the Long Island monster, but you're in the right area. Today, we're talking about Camp Hero. Rebecca, make sure it goes boom, boom, boom. Because I've been sleuthing. Camp Hero is located in Montauk, New York. Chris, you know a little bit about Montauk. Montauk is a beautiful place that you can go with your family, go to the beach, have a good summertime. Also, the Bordy Barn is there. You can go get annihilated on Sundays during the summer only. <laughs> okay, nice. Now, have you ever heard about the Camp Hero conspiracy theories? I have, actually. It's kind of being from Long Island and being a Long Island bro, you hear certain rumblings about monsters, military-created monsters on Montauk. So, yeah, there's there's a bit of um, people know about Wait, it. Wait, you're being serious? Dead serious. People know about the Montauk military installation there. No way. Yeah. That's so cool because it was new to me when I learned about it. I'm not from Long Island, obviously. But once I found it, I got more interested, especially when I found out Stranger Things is based off of this one base, actually. The first time I saw Stranger Things, I was like, oh, that kind of reminds me of that like weird military base. Really? Back home. Yeah. Well, let's get into it. I think first we should explain what we're talking about, what Camp Hero is, Montauk, New York, etc. So Fort Hero, which is located in Montauk, New York, on the point just south of the Montauk Lighthouse. Do you know the Montauk? So Lighthouse? yeah, Long Island is like a very long island and it's like 112 miles across and at the very very tippy peak of it opposite of new york if you go to the end of the island that's where montauk is so it was actually named after major general andrew hero jr um, the fort was established in 1942 and then later upgraded in the same year by the army to camp hero so it went from a fort to a camp i don't know the difference i'm not a doctor now in world war ii german u-boats were a very serious threat to the united states eastern coast um, and Montauk was considered a very likely point for invasion, which makes sense to what you said. You could come in, land there, and then move your way to New York City. Yeah. Right? And you could establish a beachhead. So eventually the Navy moved into the base as well, um, including Fort Pond Bay and the Montauk Manor. And they even tossed in a torpedo testing facility in the area. Now, to protect the camp from enemy bombers, they actually made the entire camp look like an East Coast fishing village. The gym was built to look like a church. All concrete bunkers had fake roofs on top and fake windows painted on the sides. To make it look civilian-y. Yeah, which has actually fueled some of the conspiracy theories of like, oh, they were trying so hard to be secret. We're gonna jump to December 1960 when the infamous huge radar was put in place. And it's like referenced all the time in Stranger Things. You yeah. see that old, like gross building and they have the old radar that doesn't work anymore. Well, that's real. It's the AN slash FPS 35 radar. It became operational Montauk. The reflector was 126 feet long, 38 feet tall, weighing 40 tons, and was supposedly the second ever built of its kind. It was able to detect airborne objects at distances well over 200 miles. Hardcore. It also used frequency diversity technology, making it resistant to electronic countermeasures. It was so powerful that it actually disrupted local TV and radio broadcasts and had to be shut down several times and recalibrated. And here's a quote from a local uh, Montaukian during the time that it was operational. He said, every 12 seconds, the radar tower would rotate and there would be animals freaking out and people getting headaches and bad dreams. And you know, electronic equipment would go haywire. I don't buy that. That guy sounds like he's full of it. But the, mil the, the, the cattle were having bad dreams because of the radar? He said people. He said the animals were going crazy, people uh, were having bad dreams. I'm assuming they were also having bad dreams. That's probably what was driving. The cattle? <laughs> yeah. So I will say it, it could sound nutty. However, the military did admit that they had to shut it down and recalibrate because it made it a It was messing with the TVs. TVs yeah. very different than my dreams. Than a human brain. That's a big jump for me. That's true. I but guess what, maybe it gets crazier. What, what else happened? In 1978, the Air Force submitted a proposal to the Carter administration to just shut down the base, mostly because at this point you use satellites. You don't need these huge radars anymore. There's no more threat. And as the Cold War ramped up, they kept the base open for a bit just to be protective of Soviet airplanes and whatnot. But they eventually realized it's unnecessary. We don't need it. So in 2002, the entire 
grounds was designated to a state park, which is actually not that long ago when you think about it. We were high school boys. Yeah, I mean. You were middle school. Yeah, it was not that I was high long school. ago. I would have bullied you so hard for being in middle school. You were a bully in high school? No, I was bullied. <laughs> That's why I joined the Marine Corps, let's be honest. It remains off limits to this day, and here's why. You do have the above ground base, but there's a huge network of subterranean tunnels okay. that were built for this base. Um, and that's what's also fueled a lot of the conspiracy theories. What's in these tunnels? What were they used for? What was under there? A lot of it is unknown. And from reports of people who have gone there just to find out what's up with this base, they're full of water. They've water. been flooded? Yeah, people yeah. have walked through them, but it's up to their waist, it's up well, to their chest. Well, one thing Long Island is known for is you have the Long Island Medium Show, famous for having been from Long Island. You've heard of it. Wait, is that the woman? Yeah, the woman who does readings. So Long Island is known for already just being on board with like something supernatural is happening. Okay, what is it? Like it's a small place, high density of people. Yeah. They're down to just, if someone says they saw a ghost, I have so many friends, so many friends that are just like, oh, dude, I saw a ghost last night. That's not how they say it. A lot of, bro, I saw a ghost last night. You you want to grab an egg sandwich or what's up? Thank you. (laughs) Or abduction stories. Lots of my friends have abduction stories. Shut up. Yeah. Dude, Long Island is sounding crazy and crazy. <laughs> yeah, right now. yeah. Uh, but there's more, right? So this is where the actual conspiracy theories start. So in the 80s, a few men who are now grandpas mm-hmm. came forward claiming that they were subjects of what they called the Montauk Project, which was an alleged continuation of the mysterious Philadelphia experiment. And his name was Preston Nichols, an electrical engineer who claims what, what, what are you laughing about? You want to talk about it? I don't, I don't mean to disrupt your flow, but his name was Preston Nichols. His name is Preston Nichols, man. That's such a made up name. He's a real, he wrote a book. It's published. Imagine being born with that name though. Preston I'm, I'm sorry, I keep interrupting. You know what I like? You can't tell someone their name's made up. I would, if I met Preston Nichols, I'd be like, your name is made I feel up. like you're, you're so Montaukian. This is why they chose Montauk. Uh, okay, so, so Preston Nichols. Yeah. He was an electrical engineer, and he claims that he once worked on the base there. Uh, and he stated that the facility was built in order to train psychic spies out of young boys using tech gathered from a wrecked alien spacecraft. I do want to say, though, for point of reference, yeah. the film Men Who Stare at Goats is based, Great movie. based off a real Green Beret unit that was trying to do real psychoactive training in the 70s. So we so, know that they were trying to do this. We don't know that they were doing it with alien technology. Also, another point of reference, the MK Ultra experiments, yeah. which got all the way to the courts, who we know for a fact the CIA was feeding drugs to children to try to make them into like superhumans. Kids though? Yeah. Is this huge radar facility, an underground conclave of conspiracy, child manipulation, LSD testing, blah, 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 or, is it really just a really overrated, boring radar uh, facility <laughs> with a bunch of tunnel systems? Do you believe Nichols Pickles? Personally, no, just because he's crazy. Here's what he claims. I'm going to read his quote. We had the little grays and larger grays, as well as a variety of reptilian beings, said Nichols. The large grays didn't want anything to do with me. When I entered a room, they would leave. He's talking about alien grays. He didn't get along with the aliens. He got along more with the reptilians. <laughs> or no, just the big ones. The little ones, I guess they were cool with him. Yeah. He, he's like a grandpa type. Right. We'll have a photo up. He looks like Santa Claus. Now he claims that among the experiments performed on this secret base were projects that uh, were intended to master time travel and experiments that he says were successful when they culminated in a hole ripped in space and time in 1983. He claims that that happened. In 1983, they were successful. However, while I do think that Nichols is a nut job. Mm -hmm. I do think that. I don't think he met alien greys. I don't think he met reptilians. And I don't think there was a big space-time continuum in 1983. That's me personally. It is important to consider that there are precedents that validate the existence of our secret government experiments, especially with the military. Also, besides MKUltra, in 1932, the public health system began what they call the Tuskegee study of untreated syphilis in the Negro male in which 600 black men, 399 of whom had syphilis, were observed and actively denied known treatments for the debilitating disease, just to see what would happen. 
right? Bummer. That that happened. That's that's fact. Yeah, yeah we know about. And then that, of yeah. course, 1953 was MK Ultra testing drugs for interrogation. Okay. Um, and then as part of Operation Paperclip, after World War II, the U.S. actively recruited Nazi scientists for government employees, right. some of whom were rumored to have continued their human experimentation experience to the Montauk Project. So we do know for a fact we did bring Nazi scientists to America. That's known. That's fact. Especially the ones who did human experiments. They came here and they allegedly continued those experiments. That's part of the reason why people are so interested in this is because if some were brought to the Montauk base, why? Yeah. Why and if you're gonna do it, Montauk's the place to do it. I mean, like, it's beautiful. It's <laughs> it's honestly the best place. People summer there. I thought you were gonna say because it's out of the way. You know, <laughs> they won't even know. Wait, right? is the law, is the monster in here? The monster? Yeah, I want to know about the monster. You want to talk about the Montauk monster of 2008? I did do some light research into the Montauk monster and found that a lot of the story around it kind of falls apart. Like Boo. the person who took the picture couldn't be found. Like the person who supposedly took the body couldn't be found. A bunch of stuff like that. Now I didn't do fair research into it though, but the Montauk monster is a sweet little touch Okay. to Camp Hero. Camp Hero sounds shady and sketchy as hell. I personally would not be surprised whatsoever if the US government was doing some weird stuff there. Maybe just get, getting weird on Camp Hero. Or it could just be a radar facility. It's definitely the place you would have a radar facility, like for strategically. Sure. We know the MK Ultra program happened. The question is, was that program happening in Montauk? The answer is probably no, but that is the question. I think it was probably a radar facility to see if anyone's up to no good trying to come at New York City. I think here's what we have to do. We go there. We can go there actually. We're, <laughs> we're like, how many hours Road? away? Two, two and a half. Two and a half, we can go there. But what I want to know is more about the Montauk project. Like if there are, were any Nazi scientists actually brought to Montauk? Was Montauk one of the sites? Were some of my neighbors Nazi scientists at the Montauk lab? Based on the comment section alone, <laughs> we will decide if we're going to go to Montauk and decide to go deeper into the Montauk project. I don't think there's aliens at all. You think maybe they were just, maybe they were doing some weird research there, but not, not I could, alien weird. I think that they were potentially doing human bullshit. Like, Experiments. Yes. Let us know if you want us to dive deeper into the Montauk project. If you want us to actually go to the facility, which we can, and actually go into the tunnels. I was able to find online the spots where you can go into the tunnels. Tweed jacket and all, GoPros, lights, are you in? Yeah. I just want to say thank you so much for tuning in. If the CIA is still watching, don't worry, we're not gonna blow up Montauk yet. Cheers. Cheers. <laughs>